Here it is. Here it is, boys. We're on YouTube. Here it is. The, uh, final? Final? Tester Quest? I should probably... I should probably remove that. We're gonna be getting a lot of follows for the last route. We have a lot of people watching, too. Uh... So, I should probably get rid of the alert box for this one. Sorry, new followers. I appreciate your follows, but... Well, no, nah, maybe not. Hold on. We'll mute it. We'll keep it up. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. We'll keep it up. We'll make it a little smaller. And I'll, uh, I'll turn it down. How about that? Alright. It's, uh, it's muted. Alright. No, why would I do that? Just fucking just turn it off. All right. Fuck it. Here we are. Welcome to Pastor Quest. It's dark time. We have plenty of things. Plenty of things. So just give me a second. I need to do something real quick. Give me one second. That's not the right thing. Hold on. <laughs> window capture. Window capture. Here we go. Add source. Window capture. Window capture. Add source. Okay. So, this is the, uh, the bingo. The bingo board that we created. I'm not gonna have this up the whole stream. Uh, but just know. It'll be in the background. And maybe we can take a look at how much we got right at the end. We'll take a look at it later. But this is, uh, keep in mind. Keep in mind that we have... A, bi a bingo. A bingo. Good. Alright. Who's ready to go? I'm ready to go. I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to fucking go. Uh, let's go ahead and check. Well, first of all, let's check and make sure it actually loaded, huh? Yeah, we're good. Uh, so let's check those warnings. I'm gonna guess beheading? Suicide? What is that? I don't like that. Volume 14, go ahead now, Dirk slash afterward. Huh. Yeah, there it is. Discussion of suicide. Okay. Looks like that's it. We're going. We're going. Let me get comfortable here. Ugh. I can't really just shake back and forth during this constantly. This will be fun. As if I didn't do that every fucking time. I looked at the warnings. You've come a long way. You've made a lot of friends and managed to keep them all. You're helping them grow, and you're growing alongside them while also entrenching yourself in some ridiculous nonsense along the way. Living, laughing, loving, shitting, and fighting. <laughs> I'm done. I'm closing out of the fucking window. We're done. It's over. We're. I'm already done. I'm already done with this. Can we play something else? As is right and imbalanced. You think so, anyway. You're still on the lookout for any specific bits of meaning to help nail down your sense of purpose as it careens every which way, according to the whims of friendship and fancy. There's a natural flow to this all, trolls in sets of twelves, give or take, since some of them come in pairs as you think back to your first round of friends. Kids in sets of four... You've had time to realize more about the Earths you've been hoping between, hopping between. A kid on one is an adult on the other. It's been weirdly relieving seeing multiple versions of your friends. Not that you seem to be bound by any of the same rules that they are. It's just that, as someone whose self has been scattered to the winds of time, regathered thanks to Aradia, and is still not fully stable... It's kind of nice to see that there's not just you out there trying to different trying different shit out, self-wise. When you think about the last friend left to visit in this set, you can't help but feel a bit guilty. With everything Jake's told you about him, and from what you know of Dave's bro, you're not exactly meeting him with a clean slate. You haven't let anyone else's complicated personality traits hold you back from finding a way to befriend them, though. And you're not about to start now. You'll find a way to make it work. Aradia on Bingo. No, we haven't seen Aradia. God, isn't it fun having such a complicated and nuanced tangle of interpersonal relationships within your friend group? Isn't it such a delightful challenge? Anyway, 
The point is, it's time to go meet Dirk. So you go. You don't know much about where he lives, except that it's in the future. Like Roxy minus chess guys. You zap over what should almost definitely be the perfect distance from his door. There is a moment when you are weightless, suspended in midair like a cartoon coyote man, whose name you cannot remember because suddenly you are plummeting downward and takes that and that takes all of your attention. From what you see in flashes as you spin head over heels, the thing you are rapidly approaching is the ocean. <laughs> I hate that it's fucking like dive suit has the stupid ugly ass glasses. Before you achieve some game fucking over before you can even begin, you stall yourself with a zap in and out of reality, appearing just a few inches above the water. You land with a delicate splash. Now that the imminent threat of death has passed, you look up. Metal rises up from the water in a towering scaffold. Dirk must live in the building up there. God damn it. You haul yourself up onto the janky platform at the corner of the scaffolding a few above water rungs upward and get your shit together. It's not much to look at. You probably wouldn't even be able to spot it from a distance, but it'll do. In a minute, you can pop back up to the top floor, but you should bring yourself out first. There's a chair, which is weird. You sit in it. I didn't come up with a name. I, I, a name. I didn't come up with a voice. Hmm. I made a joke last night about just doing my normal voice. <laughs> but that wouldn't make any sense. That was a slick fucking trick. Not the stealing my seat bit, though I do respect your presumptuous ass placement choices too. I mean the entrance. Nice save. You whirl around, but there's no one there. Aside from the endless ocean, the only shit in sight is the stuff on the platform. Which, now that you're considering it, kind of reminds you of one of those outdoor man caves you sometimes see at rich people's houses. The kind where you don't know enough about electricity to get why rain just doesn't fuck the whole thing up. Except inside of, like, except instead of, like, a grill and TV, it's an ashtray with an old cigar in it. It's a few screens, a keyboard, a turntable, and a speaker. A couple of hoverboard-looking things and some complicated aquatic equipment. Both situations, both, uh, situations contain a mini-fridge. Dirk. You say his name and hope he shows up. After Roxy. You really thought you weren't going to be able to be bamboozled by another fake-out meeting. But who the fuck knows? Maybe this guy's a ghost? Oh, that's stupid. The one and only. Where is he? There's no need to get freaked out about it. I'm just talking through the speakers. Or, more accurately, I'm just sending data through a text-to-speech converter, which is playing through the speakers. This isn't a function I've had the occasion to dust off, so this is genuinely thrilling. Thank you for trying and failing to so miserably to break and enter in pursuit of friendship, or whatever you were doing. Oh, you know, you do your best. Is there a place you'd want to, uh, meet, maybe? So y'all could talk in meat space? That's not exactly my forte. Let's just keep chatting like this for a bit. Bro to bro. You can use the computer if the power of my voice is getting to be too much for you. It almost is for me, if I'm being honest here. From above, there's a metallic whirring sound. Aw, <laughs> oh, shit. Daddy is... <laughs> You fucker. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear how say like, daddy. You look up and Dirk is rappelling down the scaffolding at alarming speed. Also, I know this song. <laughs> what is happening? Why is this text re what? His text is red, but that's not a, a bot. What's happening? Okay. What? What is that? Okay. The jig is up, so we might as well wrap this shit up. Dirk swings in, landing with both feet on the platform. He straightens and stares at you, chin up. Well, you think he's staring at you. He's wearing shades, which you expected. It's been real. And don't worry, I won't be far. I never am. Oh, that was... Okay, I see. Neither Dirk's hands nor his mouth are moving, but his voice is still playing over the speakers. Your smile is nervous and probably too full of teeth. What's going on? So, you're the friendable alien I've heard about. 
I thought for a minute you already ate it, but I see you Peter Pan that shit. I'm not unimpressed. He says this the regular way with his mouth. It should put you at ease, but it does not. Does he not remember talking about that already? You tell him it's nice to talk face to face, since you thought he didn't want to a minute ago when you first met. Oh, that wasn't me. Oh, you thought... LOL, wait, what? It wasn't? No, you just met a divergently evolved copy of my 13-year-old brain. The use of the speaker system is new, but it makes sense he'd up his game for interfering with relationships I'm busy forging in 3D. I guess I should go ahead and be proud of him for it. Well, damn, okay. You guess you have no reason to believe that's not possible since... Wait, did he say relationships he's busy forging? Isn't that your whole thing? I was under the impression that you were here to befriend me. My friends haven't exactly kept quiet about you. I just figured you were saving the best for last. Oh, no, that's right. That is your thing. You just thought he might be more of a challenge. Wait, are you friendship negging him right now? Is that what's happening? How did it come to this? Well, hold on. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, then. Never mind. You guess it's working. Might as well roll with it. Don't half-ass this one just because I know the gig. I still expect you to friend-woo the shit out of me. Blitz the fuck out of my friendship chakra till I see the universe's heart through its asshole and what have you. Buddy, have you been around the friendship block a time or two? He has no reason to worry. You have full confidence in your ability to show him the friendship time of his life. Oh, I'm ready. I have a list of my deepest secrets ready to unload on you right here, right now, if you think you can take it. He sure is talking a big game of preparedness, but you're not sure how true it all is. Every line of muscle in his body is held in excruciating placidity. You've never seen a jaw so purposefully unclenched. It's almost like he's begging you to call him on it. You do not call him on it. You're not sure how he'd get the idea that you could half-ass this of all things. You'll just prove it to him with your deeds. It seems like that might be his love language. With that in mind, you hold your fist out for him to bump. Ah, yes. Daps. The universal signal of brohood. Sacros. <laughs> what? I don't know how to read that. Fuck you. Sacrosanct. Sacred. Sac Pretend I read that. Across all of space time. You would be honored to give him his first. The corner of his mouth twitches. Not quite a smile. Oh, shit. I'm not gonna say it, but... I'm not gonna say it, but... <laughs> Cutie pie meme. What kind of monster would I be to refuse you? You do the thing. If he is having a moment about having touched another person for the first time, he isn't showing it. Yeah, I'm sorry I ruined that, guys. Which is fine. Each at their own pace, right? So, now that we've got that handle, what's next on the agenda? Hold on, somebody... Toby Toss said, is it just me? I can see his eyes a little bit. I can actually... Is it just... Are my eyes playing tricks on me? I can almost... It almost seems like I can just see his eyes a little. I don't know. It must be the... I think this, maybe the sprite's playing like a, a game on me. I think I could see his eyes. I don't know. Do we leap straight into the heartfelt Q&A? Or are we doing activity first? Man, what should you do next? You're not used to your friends giving you the third degree about your process, so you're a little out of step. You can't tell if he's genuinely curious or if he knows he's unbalancing you. Either way, it's intense. You look around for inspiration. Grilling? Nah. You're not a couple of dads. Oh. The high-tech scuba gear could be cool. The tingle of choice pricks at your neck. I'm not sure you have the musculature to hold that up, no offense. I didn't have your literal stick figure proportions in mind when I designed it, and it's built for looks than weight efficiency. It's built more for looks than weight efficiency, so I don't think you'd last long in it. You're not missing much, though. 
It's not particularly thrilling down there anyway. Oh, good point. You can totally see yourself sinking like a stone, flailing your arms in a vain attempt at trying to look cool while swimming, clawing at the metal clasps to free yourself. <laughs> I keep missing it. I keep looking down at chat when it happens. I think it's a picture of MSPA like drowning in the soup. Zapping out is the last resort, but misjudging distance due to the distancing water in your mouth. It all going black as you wonder why you didn't learn better when you hung out with the fairy. What? Damn, that was pretty detailed thought trail. Haha, <laughs> weird. Haha, <laughs> weird. Anyway, you could just hang out at his place instead. Classic option. That works for me. Haha, <laughs> weird. So weird. You hold out your hand to zap him alongside you, but he doesn't take it. I'll meet you there. His inflection tilts up at the end. A sound shaped like half a question he wants you to construe the meaning of yourself. What's the alternative? You piggyback ride as he climbs all the way up? He shrugs. Yeah, if you're up for it. I typically rocket board up. But a grueling climb is a good way as any to kill a morning, so either way. You consider your options. As much as you want to see if they actually has it in them to beast you uh, up the entire tower, rocket boarding sounds uh, infinitely more fun. You tell them as much. Hop on, then. Oh, fuck yeah. He kicks it into place and fires it up, offering you his hand. You don't have anything to lose but another life, so you take it. Steadily, but fast enough so you uh, have to cling to his shirt for safety, you fly upward. He circles the tower a few times in no hurry to make it to the top. Battery's showing off? You don't think that's it, but you're still working it out. The confidence in the way his body moves now, the subtle shifts in weight to steer the machine. It all feels genuine. Like this is a much more comfortable thing for him than the conversation was. The wind whips at your face. There is sea in every direction. You land at the top of the tower, and he waits for you to hop down before doing the same, and then kickflips the rocket board into, uh, Kinsey's? Here we are, home sweet home. I hope we're prepared for just how homey this shit is, too. I've had nothing but time to flex my massive decor muscles. Ugh. You follow him inside into his room, like you have with everyone else. It's full of his shit, like everyone else. Horse. Horse. Oh, there's sword in the background. Nice. Unlike everyone else, he leans against his workbench, calm and collected and clearly, with every fiber of his being, waiting for your judgment. You wonder if it's weird how you can tell uh, that about him, since it does seem like he's putting a lot of effort into the facade. You aren't sure if he's being unpracticed at having an audience, or maybe you're just extra good at reading people by now. Maybe it's the shades that are messing with you. Maybe it's Dirk writing the story for you. They're nothing new after Dave, but with Dirk, it's almost like he's been he's been less penetra uh, penetrable without them. Try and focus on the de decor, as he clearly wants you to do. What do we got going on? Oh, okay, there are themes of puppets, horses, robots, and musical equipment. It's got a post-ironic whimsy of Dave style, which you figure makes sense considering this universe's Dave had a hand in stocking it. But with a dash of Equius's unabashed taste, that's a bit of a surprise, but sure. Martha Stewart will fall to her knees, weeping at a defeat, you tell her. Utterly destroyed by the Feng Shui and my cinder block placement. She'd retire on the spot, you say. The more you play off his joke, the more he seems to loosen up for real, so you continue. Much better than a scuba diving trip already. What's down there, anyway? The ruins of 21st century civilization, mostly. Oh, shit. Yeah, boring as hell. He pauses and tilts his head, considering. I wouldn't call them boring, necessarily. It's more that I find it cosmically frustrating to swim in literally any radial line and find nothing but the wasted leftovers of a dead city. Aside from being dependent on it as a source of food, the ocean mostly functions for me as a suffocating and inescapable natural barrier between me and the rest of human history. Uh, it's a constant, lapping reminder of my situation, so I'm not often hyped to pile the decibars on. 
Not sure how my, well my deep personal beef with the Im imagery of the sea will land for you, but there it is. I think it might not be so offensive to me were the metaphor less blatant. It's embarrassing. Anyway, there's the first of my layers off. Feels fresh. Let's keep going. What else have you got? It's a little unsettling how direct he's being about the friendship building process, but it's not like you haven't been categorically pushy to achieve that title with literally everyone you have memory of ever met, so fair game. You sure you can come up with some things you've been curious about, if he's ready to dive in the deep end, and if he'll forgive the continued aquatic figurative language, the love quadrangle, the questionable settings of the robotic gift choice for his would-be paramour, the differences of opinion of playing the game. He seems to be enjoying the theatric uh, theatricality of the friendship metagaming dance you're doing, so you amp it up for him. You clasp your hands together behind your back and pace his room as you monologue, pausing for effect when the impulse strikes you. As you talk, you consider which would be the right issue to end on, to really zing him into opening up. Maybe his feelings about his universe is Dave. Or, just for fun, maybe where the horse stick comes from. Depending on which you choose, you could end up... Loathe as I am to interrupt this ace attorney monologue. I wouldn't touch that. Oh. Fuck. Uh, you look down at where you were about to dramatically place your hand. There's a goddamn sword there, haphazardly stored in the hands of some fucking dead-eyed puppet. Again, your brain careens down a fleeting pathway. Accidental pressure, clean slice, blood, a lot of it. And leave the katanas for the big boys. Although, if you want to touch a weapon, holy shit, do I have an idea. <laughs> He's... <laughs> Aight, Mr. Reader, I'm heading out. He scoots by you and reaches into the corner of the room, coming up holding a really shitty blue sword. Sword is- Oh yeah! <laughs> there it is. His hand is all fucking crusty. Sword is a loose term, though, and honestly, holding is, too. An object so shitty you can barely even focus on it, sort of clipping through his hands. He holds it out to you as best he can. In the name of the succulent convergence of science and horseshit, I need to see what happens when you touch this thing. You reach out and take it from his hands. It studies under your grasp. Dirk hops up on his workbench to sit and observe, and you slice through the air a time or two. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely goddamn incredible. Something about your narrative liminality and rudimentary form must allow you to actually wield this piece of shit artifact I inherited from my bro. Holy shit, wait! He can finally- There's finally somebody who can use the sword! After all these years! After all these years, there's finally somebody who can wield sword! The sword exists for a reason! He's worthy! The implications of this are likely jack-fucking-nothing, but it's still easily the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> He's leaning forward, laughing. Dimples carved into his freckled cheeks. Freckled? There's a small twist in your heart about it. You can't place why. You're really just able to hold that fucking thing. He clears his throat and settles down, adjusting his glasses. Thanks for that. Anyway, where were we? Alright. You were attempting to locate my weak points. Did you want to keep adding to the list or zero in on one option? So far, the short answers are, one, a quartet of teens with not a lot of choices. What do you expect? Two... Call up my autoresponder if you want us to hash that one out, or three, it's all under control. You guess it all boils down to the same general topic, really. His friends. That's where this whole thing always ends up, right? It ends up, anyway, right? Especially since you're the, his pathway to being able to hang out with them now. Dirk just shrugs. Huh. You'd have thought he had a stronger opinion about that one. Doesn't he want to hang out with his friends? Doesn't he want to finally meet Jake? 
He wrinkles his face like you've shoved a lemon in his mouth. Come on, dude. You can't just spirit me away to the person I want to see most right off the bat. At least make me try to earn it first. He shifts his weight. The light from the window bounced off, his, off the choppy mirror of the ocean is bright against his back. Does he have to earn it? You mean, doesn't he think it's been hard enough already? His laugh this time is hollow. Is there a cap on that? You're not sure, but your whole existence is a series of cheat codes. So what else does he expect from you? You whip the sword around a few times to prove your point, but it kind of makes you dizzy to watch, so you put it back in the corner. And anyway, you know he'll cave at some point. How else is he going to get to see them, now that the game is off? He shrugs again. What? What? He does know they're not playing anymore, right? Like... They're even talking about a larger operation to shut the whole thing down for everyone on the planet. I know they think that's what's happening, but I'm not worried about it. They'll all play when the time comes. How in the world does he know that? Last you checked with any of them, they had all moved on. I haven't gotten around to convincing them yet. But I will. It's clear that they spent a lot of time with them. It's clear that you've spent a lot of time with them, but they're my friends too. I think I know what they'll do. He dis his dismissiveness is raising your hard to raise hackles. That's not really the point, though, you say. Won't trying to get them back on board just amp up the conflict in his friend group? And more importantly, why bother trying to make that choice for them? He doesn't even need the game anymore. You can just take him to see them. He can skip the machinations and just, like, hang out with his friends without having to prove anything to anyone. It's easy. The slight tightening of his eyebrows is... The only thing that shows his frustration. The rest of him is still. The vowels in his drawl are slick and sharp. Black ice on curved country road. It's not that simple. Do you think I don't want to see him? Do you think I'd tear off a single page of my sweet bro and hella Jeff quote of the day calendar without thinking that? There are a lot of cards in this and a lot of hands here, which I'm sure you're truly appreciating the importance of. I can't just fold mine and hope your shit works out instead. Things are in motion. Things have been in motion since before I was born. You can't just stop them without massive fallout. Yeah, you're not saying you know all the answers. Just that you know some of them. And you feel like he could trust you a little bit. He looks at you like you've slapped him. Trust you? Well, yeah. A weak puff of air leaves his mouth as he shakes his head. This entire morning has been an exercise in trust. Has it? Dirk is still for a minute. He's probably still staring at you behind those shades. When he speaks again, his voice is steady, but the room is heavy with every ounce of tension he's suppressing. Okay, let's get this let's sketch this out. What are the parameters of vulnerability that we that would count if the ones I'm extending don't? You were just freewheeling there, but you guess you gotta come up with something concrete for him. Uh, okay, how's this? He does all this dangerous scuba diving and sword fighting and rocket boarding shit that could go sideways at any moment, but he wouldn't even let you zap him. There's an example. Okay, yes, that's true. I want to be the only one in charge of endangering my own life. You got me. But trust isn't only meaningful if it's given completely, or in terms of physical safety. I've been preparing myself for this, for you, ever since I heard you were making the rounds. I was ready to... He trails off, shaking his head. His wordlessness seems to frustrate him more than anything you've said. Seems really unpracticed at getting riled up, and you wonder how often someone pushes his buttons like this. You're not really sure how the two of you got to this point. Argumentative isn't your main mode, either, so you can't tell if you push too far. Never mind. Here. He hops off the workbench, rolls his shoulders, and grabs your hand. Do it. You don't ask where. You pick somewhere close by. But scary enough for this thrill seeker... Uh, but scary enough for this his thrill seeker ass to feel like it was worth the effort. The air at the top of the tower on Dirk's roof is calmer than you would have thought it'd be. He drops your hand and steps back, leaning against the landing. Crushed it. See, sometimes trying new shit and trusting people with your well-being can be fine. Sometimes all you need is a friend to prove that they have your back. Dirk scrunches up his face like you're embarrassing him. 
You mean, empirically speaking. It seems like what happened is solid proof that... Oh. Okay, yeah, I get it. Thanks. He's smiling, so you don't push that... You don't push into that thank you, but you do wonder, after a minute of looking out over the ocean with him, if it's time to scoot things along. Scoot! You aren't in a hurry, really, but you were getting somewhere before, even if it was getting uncomfortable. He's trying. Scoot! Maybe harder than anyone has actively tried to befriend you yet. Oh, hold on, guys. I got a, uh... I got a Mountain Dew Baja Blast here. This is, uh... Isn't this the favorite soda of, uh... What's his name? Diz... Dismerit... Dismerit, uh... Fast Hour? Crack one of these babies open. Listen, this is the Dismerit drink. What's his name? I don't even remember his name. Fuck it. The fact that you think that this is all still... The fact that you think that this is still sort of funny to you, but maybe Dirk isn't this transparent to everyone. Maybe it's just you and your non-stop thirst to know people. How much has this boy wanted to be known? You remember your early skepticism about him and, make, and laugh to yourself. You haven't had to make yourself try to like him at all. You just do. Weird, uptight shit and everything. There's a lot of Dirk going on in there. But you're ready to try and understand him more. It's what you do. So you press on. Oh boy. We have five pages of saves here. Look at that. Look at that, <laughs> Look at that shit. Page one, boys. There it is. Page one of saves. All right. What is it, boys? Death end? We're going with death end? Death end, death end, death end. Death end. Try one more time to convince him to drop the idea of playing the game. Holy shit, this is excruciating. I keep thinking if I ignore this bullshit, it'll sort itself out, but Christ. I don't need to see this. No one needs to see this. What the fuck? Huh? Wait, can he not hear? You've stopped the choice train once before yourself, but you've never been interrupted by someone else. I thought we were having a chill bro moment until just now. I have no clue what you're talking about. I can't believe I was ever this pathetic. Dirk, you had all day, every day, to do nothing but get swollen both body and mind, and this is how you spent your time, looking wistfully out at the sky? No wonder you're out here falling this friendships for this friendship's friend simps! Falling for this friend simps weak shit overtures! Okay! Oh my god, what? Once again, you find yourself looking around for a Dirk who is nowhere to be found. Regular Dirk, who you were finally getting somewhere with, is looking at you like you've lost your last marble. Dirk really doesn't hear that? It sounds like him. Just like... Oh, sorry. Mountain Dew. Shouldn't have drank Mountain Dew. Now I'm all burpy. So... Dirk really doesn't hear that. It sounds like him just like older and meaner. No, dude. Are you okay? Fine. If your meager little brain needs me to assume corporeal form in order to process this, I'll do it. <laughs> For Christ's sakes!
Holy shit. I'm gonna- I'm gonna fuck with the- the bingo board later. But... Fuck me. Feast your eyes. Holy shit. Holy shit. Sup, Dirk. I'll get to you in a minute. I have to deal with this little meddler first. I gotta crank down this fucking music. This shit slaps, though. James, what the fuck? <laughs> this is fucking good. Oh. Either way, music's fucking great. Why are you sour pleasing? Why is it not? What are you doing? Is it? It's fucking great. I don't know why you're sour pleasing. I'll get to you in a minute. I have to deal with this little meddler first. He turns to you and you step away reflexively. Your eyes flick, black, flick to your Dirk who is staring mouth slack at his older self. I've let you piss around for far too long. He's fucking ripped! I just realized he's fucking ripped! Oh. Sorry, it's, it's, it's so good that it's distracting me. Alright, to be fair to myself, which is important, I have a lot on my plate. Creating a whole species from scratch isn't child's play. I knew this was gonna fucking happen. I knew this was gonna fucking happen. It's just, it's just, this is exactly where we are. This is exactly where we are in Homestuck 2. So I let this go on, figuring you'd fuck up for real and die for real, but you keep coming back and it's getting out of hand. So the plan is this. Let my man Dirk do his thing. You fuck off and let people live their arcs. I clean up your mess and then get back to being God while this timeline continues on as it's supposed to. Are we good? Jesus. Alternate timelines and multiple selves aren't anything particularly new to you. You think, but... Still, you don't know what got so far up his ass here. No, we're not good? You were in the middle of something. A sacred rite of friendship to be fucked up by no one but yourself. You don't know what kind of stuff the future holds, but that isn't your purview. This is. And is the one interrupting that. Oh my god, I can't work like this. You have to understand the scale we're working with. He flicks you outside the temple, and you feel instantly like your brain got strapped to the nose of a rocket ship on liftoff. What? You see a young man standing in his bedroom. Wait, you know him? Your eyes roll back into your head and you feel his story rush to you. Panel by panel, page by page. Some of it you remember from when you were trapped in Doc Scratch's apartment and some other stuff is newer, raw and sweet and sickening. Honks and caws and gloves and blows froth together in a synaptical transmutation of unholy cultural zeitgeist and that jolts through you like light. Blasting down your cerebral cortex and out through your clenched teeth. When it's done, you collapse to the floor. Oh, fuck. You remember it. Homestuck. It's also fresh, too. 
So many of your friends dead. Some of them more than once. Shit, 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 shit. Dirk. You open your eyes and Dirk is standing over you, his hand on your shoulder. Oh, good. You're alive. You were starting to freak me out. Almost as much as shredded and deranged me over there is freaking me out. But let's just take this all at one step at a time. Anyway, now that you're up, what just happened? Future me was being a real cryptic dick while you were conked out. Patience is a virtue, Dirk. I just had to get our time-traveling buddy informed first so they can make the right call. Shit. Okay. You don't know where to begin. You look at Dirk's face, not even trying to hide his concern for you. And holy shit, you care about him. You cared about him before you knew every tiny fucked up detail about his life. And now, with a reminder of where his story leads, leaning smugly against the railing, you find you still do. He's intense and pushy and profoundly complicated. And right now, he's helping you bet to your feet, his hand steady and firm on your back as you find your balance. You try to look back and forth between the two of them, trying to organize your thoughts as Dirk waits for you to respond. This isn't as simple as an evil Dirk and good one. If you learned anything from your travels, it's that everyone has the capacity for hurt inside of them, and everyone the capacity for love. It's just a matter of proportion, of choice, of circumstance, of time, and if you're being fair, of interpretation too. Part of you wants to grab Dirk and run, to save him from this trajectory he's on, but then... If you claim that level of control, are you really any better than Ultimate Dirk is himself? Who the fuck are you to make these choices for other people? What gives you the right to wrench cannon from the people it belongs to, the people it's about? Why does it always, always, always come back to you, making a fucking choice? Go ahead and answer him. I'll correct you if you get anything wrong, don't worry. Oh, you bet he fucking will, you say. No doubts there. You pause your internal debate. Take a deep breath and explain things to your friends. This is Mega Dirk. The combo of all the splinters of Dirk fermenting in his flesh container and not holding on to his shit nearly as well as he likes to pretend. Ultimate Dirk. <laughs> you wish. You ignore him and continue explaining. Ultimate Dirk has done a lot of heinous shit to people he used to care about. To people Dirk cares about. And he just brain blasted you with the memories you used to have of, among other things, everything that will ever happen to Dirk and to his friends in the future. All in order to convince you to keep everything on that path. He wants the same thing Dirk just finished arguing with you about wanting. A future where they play the game. Dirk is still staring at Ultimate Dirk. Shit. You keep going, telling him you know it might be far-fetched from this vantage point. But this is a path he goes down. Dirk finally speaks. No, I can see it. I mean, if anyone was going to pull the I'm you but stronger, it would be me. All of me combined. Exactly. Now we should all be on the same page vis-a-vis -vis what we need to do. Which starts with the f this flat fuck going back to... Hey guys, it's Flat Fuck Friday! Perp, it's Flat Fuck Friday! Which starts with this flat fuck going back to wherever they came from, and the rest of us going back to our regularly scheduled programming. God, you can't even look at this guy, you think, as you look at him. He's so smug, trapped so far down the path he's planned for himself that he can't even entertain the idea that he could be wrong without it tearing him apart. The more you look at him, the more you can't stand him. Prince a hard-ass bastard destroying everything you work to make? Fuck! Forget all that stuff you worried about before. How dare you let yourself be convinced he could be right. Your allegiance is not to the story, but to the people within it. No matter what. Do you have a plan for how you can protect your friends without the tenets of canon? No. Do you give a single shitting fuck? Also no. You know he could end you immediately, but you feel freed by the number of times you've died. You do not fear him. He is not your concern. You turn to Dark. You're sorry, you say, but fuck this guy. Don't listen to him. Everything you just remembered, all the stuff he was using to prove his point, it only makes you even more sure of what you said before. That Dirk can still be happy without all that. He doesn't have to play the game to beat it. Wow, listen to them trying to boss you around like that, Dirk. I'll tell you what you don't do. 
Don't for a second think I'm too far gone to remember what it's like to be you. Don't pretend you haven't wanted to know what I know. To line every part of yourself until you know it all. Feel it all. Don't be afraid of becoming who you need to become. The end always justifies the means, Dirk. We know this. Fuck that. You're sorry to yell, but you never, you never yell this much, but fuck that. This bitch can't bear the thought of a timeline existing without his influence or even his worldview that everything has to be painful to matter. Things are already painful enough. He doesn't have to work overtime to create more pain just so he can feel like he's in control of how much punishment he gets and how badly he deserves it. Because Dirk doesn't deserve it, you say. And you look back at the one you need it for. He's not looking back at you. He's looking at Ultimate Dirk, and there's something about the soft, fallen arc of, arch of his eyebrows that just folds you up and eats you whole. It's longing like you've never seen in your life, deep and consuming with the silver glint of loathing. He's going to drown in it if you don't do something. What could you do, you wonder? You care about him, and he does about you, to a degree. You know Dirk now. And you know he loves... Though it's fierce, to a definite fault, he does not do it easily. You're not the one who can get him through this. He hasn't known you long enough, but you can be a bridge. But to whom? Part of you wants to test out a few things, to throw a couple of friends at the wall and see what sticks. That doesn't sit right with you right now, though. It's messy, and you know Dirk would hate having his feelings experimented on like that. Even after all this, you find yourself not wanting to do that to him. Thank fuck your side ability to anime monologue to yourself in your head without time passing too quickly. Because you really need to think this one up thr through. You really need to think this one through. You have to pick the one single person to help convince him he doesn't need what Ultimate Dirk is offering. I know who it is. It's Roxy. Jake? God, no. Not right now. He'd be eaten, be eaten alive by Ultimate Dirk, and you can't do that to him. He's your friend, too. Maybe a wild card. Someone Dirk doesn't know but could get along with. Oh, shit. Equius? He's like Dirk if Dirk liked to get bossed around, so they might get along great, actually. Though, you need someone who can tell Dirk what to do in this moment. So then again, maybe not. You can't hedge your bets or bring everyone, because that'd just overwhelm him. Plus, there's no budget or time for that. The answer punches you hard in the chest, and you're about to zap sneak away to find them when Ultimate Dirk speaks up. That was a touching rant you just gave. Very compelling. You know what? Fine. Do what you do best and choose. Steal him away to obscurity or leave him to his destiny. I'm not worried. In fact, as a show of my trust in my younger splinter, I'll even fuck off myself until go time. On the one in a million chance you do actually get him to go with you, there's no way that's going to be a good end. We all know he'd regret it. He'll second guess if it was the right thing every day of his life until he realizes what a flaccid existence he's leading. But by then it'll be too late. Do your worst. There's a jolt and then he's gone. There's a beat of silence when you try to work out how to act normal. Now that you know what you know, but thankfully he speaks first. Are all your hangouts this buck fucking wild, or did you really pull out all the stops for me? Well... You were about to pull out another when Ultimate Dirk just blasted off like that. It's not too late, though, if he'll agree to at least hear you out. Well, then by all means, continue pulling. Let's see what this, where this shit takes us. You'll be right back, you tell him. I'll be right here, just chilling and contemplating existence and my place in it. No worries. Hmm. Huh. 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 Um. I know where this is. I know where this is. This is Earth C. Shit. The zap this time is even more disorienting than your sideways universe zaps. You know why, though, since you know everything. You're not sure you're supposed to be here, but Ultimate Dirk already accused you of fucking shit up. So why not fuck shit up a little harder? You want to go pick up this person, and specifically this version of this person. The version you made friends with already isn't ready to meet Dirk yet, probably. But thanks to your recent mind freak, you remember that this one, having lost his Dirk, might be a little more interested. <gasps> oh! Holy shit! 
Whoa, what? Who the fuck are you? It's fucking... It's fucking my age, Dave. What the fuck? Motherfucker, it's, it's Gabe. Okay, that answers that question. You guess you fucked things up to the point that the candy timeline is not the same as the one you're probably making friends in before. This is probably the stuff Ultimate Dirk is so bent out of shape about fixing. Well, it is what it is. You didn't have time to come up with your elevator pitch, but you work best at your full power to empathy. Zero to planning, so here you go. Uh, hey, you tell him. Sorry to intrude, but you have a pretty big favor to ask of him. You know he doesn't know you, but you know an alternate version of him that lives outside canon. You met him, went to Olive Garden, and made friends, and you promise you're legit. <laughs> Bro, you said Olive Garden. You got me. That's like a magic word to get me to trust you implicitly. Don't spread that around, though. Also, you look like someone who ironed the mayor, so that's, like, a million more points in your favor. And I am doing dick else that's useful all day. Or any day, to be real with you. So what's the favor? <laughs> that's great. The favor is that you need to borrow him for, like, a quick minute so he can help you have a conversation with your universe's Dirk. At the sound of Dirk's name, he goes still. See... Dirk's convinced he needs to <laughs> take the advice of yet another universe's way shittier Dirk and retcon your whole friendship mission so that they can go off and make canon happen, which ends pretty badly for a lot of people, your friends, involved. And now that you know that, you really want to just side with you and, and let everyone chill and hang out and live their lives, and you're not sure of all the details about how that will work yet, but the point is that Dirk... I'm in. Great. Sick. Yes. Okay. You take his hand and off you go. <laughs> Holy shit. I just popped in with a fucking, like, <laughs> 25-year-old Dave talking to this, like, 16-year-old Dirk. When you pop back, Dirk is standing how he was when you first met him, casually braced for emotionally fatal impact. There's a moment where Dirk and Dave just stare each other down like neither of them are fully ready to register the reality of the other. You really fucking hope this works because it's your Hail Mary. Sup. Holy fuck, man. I didn't think invoking the name of Olive Garden would have this much effect, but here the fuck we are. I mean, sup. Yeah, sup. Oh. Dave pulls him into a short, back thumping bro hug, which Dave Dirk weathers like a wet cat, not trusting a towel to dry, dry him off. So. So. I'll be real with you. We've already had a version of this first meeting combo, and we used, like, a lightning round conversational mechanism to get shit popping. But I get the feeling we don't have time for all that right now, so I'll skip a few steps for you. Our little mutual friend here says you got opin options. Well, they seem to think I do, but I'm not convinced. Do you have opinions about it? Sure do. I mean, i do anything this little pal suggested after what they just did for me, but, like, what's even the situation? They don't want you to play Spurb or some other you or some other in some other you does. There's a little more to it than that, but yes, that's the gist. You watch them chat. This is good, you think. Good, but you're not sure it's enough. You think Dirk is your friend now. But the more you think about it, the weirder the word feels in your brain. Friendship means something different to everyone you've met. Safety, fun, a wake up call, a person to talk to. You hope that for at least some of them. You've helped them see what is lovable inside themselves. You look at Dirk and wonder if he'll be one of those. He's being so polite to Dave. He must be afraid. Does Dirk even believe others can, of their own volition, love him? You tune back in. Man, if you wanted to argue about canon, you should ask your bro here, like, to get anyone else to come along. That shit's not my forte, but seems to me that it's not actually of some immutable bastion of narrative sancticity. It's just some shit that some asshole said and did some choices they make. Okay, well, if I don't follow the plan, beat the game, and get to where you are now, how do I know my choices will still matter? I don't know, man. You're not in my timeline anymore because of a choice you made a while back, so my mileage might vary a bit. Dirk shifts backwards. You wish you'd look more surprised about it. I was wondering if they were going to talk about this. Oh. Yeah. I don't want to waste your time or anything. 
just getting to talk to you is worth it. So, I don't know. Do what you gotta do. But, like, coming from me, a guy who could have just done some stuff differently himself, at least try and trust your friend. I know you don't like believing this stuff, but maybe listen to the people who like you for you, because they mean it. I'm rambling now, so I guess if I had one thing to say to you, it'd just be... It's okay to not have all the answers. Yeah, that's... That's what I tell you. Dirk nods. So, I'm processing that. A lot. But, I also cannot go any further in this conversation without telling you that our little friend is liminally enough to be able to hold- is liminal enough to be able, able, able to hold the sword. Yo, yo, what the fuck? Oh, wow. Dave, huh? Okay, bringing the fucking guns to a knife fight here. I didn't expect this level of underhanded maneuvering from you, but I'll respect the play. Doesn't matter anyway. I've come back with my own cheat. Sorry for the delay. I had to deal with some shit on my end. New plan. Forget us all going our separate ways to fix shit. Dirk, you're coming with me. Your friend was right about one thing. Things don't need to go back to the way they were. But not for any lame reason like the power of love. I have bigger plans than that. I promise you this limp dick excuse for a friend doesn't measure up to all the shit I could show you, will show you. Sure, it might hurt to leave your friends behind at first, and sure, you'll miss out on Jake's carnal charms. But the emptiness will fade when you realize the true power we have. Ultimate Dirk extends his hand. His cape billows obnoxiously behind him. Dirk looks at you, and then at Dave. Shit. Shit. They were almost there. You have no time left to waste. You close your eyes and will the choice to come to you. Stop him. Don't stop him. One of those has to work, right? You don't feel confident. You look at Dirk and it hits you. Ultimate Dirk was maddeningly right. It won't work if there's room for Dirk to regret it. You're not sure either of you would ever be certain it was the right choice unless you let Dirk choose it for himself. No more telling him what to do. No more telling anyone what to do. When you feel the choice pricking at you, you turn it outward. You flip the power in your belly inside out and give it the weight and give the weight of it up for a moment to him. You wait to see what Dirk does with the thing warring in him. Shit. Trust yourself. Trust them. You see it manifest in his brain and then yours, and your stomach plunges. It feels rigged from the start. There's no way Dirk will choose you and Dave when he's gone and framed it like that. God damn it. Too late to change anything yourself. You wait for Dirk to choose. Wait. Oh. I keep getting fucking notifications. You guys can't see them, but... Colonel Snivy keeps trying to play the game and keeps, like, closing it and opening it. And it keeps blocking the text box. This choice isn't gonna worry. This choice is... worry. This choice isn't going to matter. Sorry, man. Your heart drops and then you see who he's looking at. Guess you can call this one the bad end, yeah. Luckily for you, there's almost definitely another of me that can't wait to sail the seven seas of story with you or some shit. He licks his lip and raises his chin, braced for ultimate Dirk to challenge his call. I assume with your huge fucking brain you can see what's hap that happening as we speak, yes? So, no need to be a sore loser now. Be good to that me, will you? Treat him right? As right as he wants me to, I promise. Anyway, I did say one in a million odds, so statistically you have to wuss out on at least one. It's fucking gross to experience. Good thing it'll get totally assimilated into the other versions of this conversation. Now that's really the time to play the actually it's usually the just binary card. Don't want to complicate the, that particular issue for him, so you'll let it lie. You step forward, shoulder brushing Dirks. Don't gloat, it's gauche. Enjoy your moment of irrelevance before this one goes down the drain. Juices. Alright, fuck off. Yes, hell yes. You stop your celebration when you notice Dirk is a little shaky. Holy shit, what did I just do? This future you have in the works better be fucking good, my dude. 
Are you kidding me? They got it on lock. Oh, he knows it. You don't tell him you don't know every single detail yet, but you understand yourself now. You work it out when you need to. You always do. It's okay, you think, if Dirk is a little afraid. It comes with the territory when you let people in. And he'll have some more practice with that soon as you can zap up some more company. It won't be smooth sailing, though, you warn him. As long as we move past the sailing metaphor, you can jack that difficult level as high as you like. Oh, are we anti-ocean here? Yeah, extremely. The fuck water, am I right? Dirk turns his head slightly, and you know he's looking at you. He smiles, and you know he gets it. It's not about this being the real timeline or the fake one, the hard one or the easy one. It's about it being his, if he wants it. Which you realize, as you watch him turn back to laugh along with Dave, he does. Hmm. I'm afraid to press. I'm afraid to continue. <laughs> the air between you and the two of them opens up like a wound in the universe and you feel yourself being pulled towards it. You see him there too, that fucking bastard. As Ultimate Dirk pulls you through what you can only conceptualize as a tear in the narrative, you turn to look at Dirk and Dave. This is sure to lead to some bullshit and you need to confirm that they're still intact. You aren't sure where you're going next, but you don't want them to worry. As the hole starts to reseal itself with them on the other side, you give them a thumbs up. The universal signal of reassurance that things are okay. You'll be back. Neither of them are strangers to either the intricacies of plot or shenanigans, so they returned in unison. You did it. You got him a good end. Dirk Strider is your friend, you think, as you fall through nothingness. Dave can take it from here. Guess that sword isn't just for show. He really knows how to use it. You go flying out of frame, out of this volume, and straight into the epilogue. <laughs> it's like the end of Superman. That one Superman movie when they're in the fucking... Uh, no, not the epilogue. God, this is impossible. You can't believe you're the main character of such a stupid story. He launches you straight into the post-game? Final chapter? Afterward? Oh, wait. Afterward? Both of them look weird. Anyway, he launches you into an afterward. Which seems to just be that drifting gray place between universes. But this time, you aren't standing in the corridor. You're hurtling along it like a protagonist-shaped missile. This is not going to end well. Sorry, T-posing god person. This really isn't your fault. Actually, that's an A-pose. I made, I made this point! I made this point! The first time we saw him, I made this point. That it, it's not a T-pose, it's the pose from Gmod. I made that, I made that point. Like, the first time we saw him. Okay. What we're gonna do is... I know this is kind of... Okay, I'll volume up. Jesus Christ, after I do this. I just realized... I want to go back. <laughs> because I want to double check these. Okay. That one makes... That one... That one fuck... That one doesn't fucking matter. What about this one? No. Load. What about this one? I picked trust. Yeah. Oh, boy. Alright. So, there is... Alright. <laughs> there is a different ending. Yeah, we should probably do this first. I'm going to make it super confusing for you guys. Don't worry. Dirk turns to you. Apology already on its face. No. No, 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 no. You can tell where this is going. And you hate it. Might as well make it a little bit more confusing. Because fuck it. It's not you. It's me. Is levity helpful? Probably not. But I'm doing my best. It's not that this hasn't been a good time. I didn't expect to achieve this level of metatextual mind freak during our hangout. But I've really enjoyed it. This is a day I would not have thought was possible. Broke fist. <laughs> he stopped. 
He stops to hold out his fist to Dave, who, after a pause, bumps it with his own. He must know, too. He turns away. Everything Dirk is saying feels forced to you. Like he's trying to convince himself as much as he is you. Still, you know you've lost. And I have you to thank for it. I'd go so far as to consider you my friend, even. And if you frame your relative success or failure on having formed a friendship, you can call this a good end. But he trails off, turning to walk toward Ultimate Dirk. As much fun as this was, this is me we're talking about here. There is no contest. I have to know. It was always going to be you and me, Dirk. The two of them stand side by side. Twin smirks on their faces. Dirk's is almost believable. Goodbye. You curl up into yourself. A hunched ball on a tall tower on a single apartment in the middle of the sea. Your brain disconnects from the sounds of their conversation. Of Ultimate Dirk's likely victory monologue. The static of their exit. You cry into your shitty little stick hands because you thought you fucking had this one. And somehow it feels weightier than the loss of the one, just one friend. You feel like something bigger and more beautiful than you'd thought possible was at your fingertips, and now it's gone. You come back to reality at the warmth of Dave's hand on your shoulder as he crutches down next to you. His voice is thick with tears. You didn't even help him through crying. Hey, bro. I'm sorry. I don't know how much longer I can chill here. Like, emotionally. Can you take me home? Shit. <sighs> Alright, we were right to do that. We were right to do that, guys. We we were we were very right to back to back up because now now we're gonna get that real end. It's real end time, boys. Are you ready? Are you ready for the afterword? Meanwhile, in the good end, actually, that's an A pose. Common mistake. Um. Just trying to help. Oh, yeah, I gotta turn up the volume. Hold on. Okay! Shut the hey! Hey, there you go! Volume's the max! You, you guys don't even want to hear me anymore! I'll mute myself if that's what you want. Or how about we just fucking mute it? There you go. There you go, that's what you want, right? You brace for whatever hellish experience is waiting for you when you hit the event horizon. Yeah, you want to turn down, right? You want to you want to mute? I'm fine with James saying it, but you don't all have to say it. When it's like 18 people in chat going, turn up the volume. No, you don't. You brace yourself for whatever hellish experience is waiting for you when you hit the event horizon. What? Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to be back here. Your whole body aches. Not physically, more thematically. Like you just got bitch slapped straight through the mirror and a meta narrative and bodied back to the beginning. It's Dick Crotch. Oh shit. Are you literally at the beginning? Did you forget everything again? Quick. Hemospectrum, trolls, incestuous slurry, Beckworld, the fucking Madrigogs, truth, relevance, essentiality. You remember. So here you are again. You guess it all makes sense that Doc Scratch was behind it all in the end. Maybe he and Ultimate Dirk have been working together this whole time? Hey, you round shiny son of a bitch, show yourself! You receive no response. The flush green room is still. In the corner, the clock is stopped. Wait, what was that? The sound of a struggle drifts from deeper in the house. Oh, balls. Is Spade slick here to beat the shit out of Doc Scratch? That's what I was just thinking. But you thought that happened at the beginning of the game. Maybe you really have been transported back to square one. But nothing is on fire. Spade Slick sets the place on fire, right? Shit, why do so many things happen in this goddamn comic? There are just so many details to remember. You follow the sound of the ruckus, turning a corner down a long, wood-paneled hallway. 
A door stands open at the end of it, where two people appear to be locked in an intense struggle. Hey, listen, we can talk about this. You edge closer down the corridor. The mirrors on the walls watch you like eyes. This better not be hussy. I'm gonna be real mad if this is hussy. I'm gonna be real mad, like real life mad. Clearly I've made some bad decisions, I'll grant you that. The man currently hanging onto the door jam for dear life both sounds and looks familiar, but you're actually kind of having a hard time focusing on him. It makes your head swim. Hey, yes, I agree that I need to take a break, but please don't put me in here with that wolf head. Holy shit! It's Hussy! I'm so fucking mad! I'm so fucking mad! It's out for my blood! I don't know if I can hold it off for long. The second figure, a woman maybe? Appears unmoved by the man's pleas. You have no idea what's going on here, but one thing you do know is that you can't trust... You can't just allow random broads to throw dudes into rooms against their wills. Hey! You shut down the corridor. Both the man and the woman turn to look at you. The combined power of their gaze forces you to your knees. It hits you in the same tender place that Ultimate Dirk Strike had, right in the narrative. Will it be handmade? I don't know. The woman takes the chance to shove the man into the room and slam the door. Sorry about that. He won't bother us anymore. What happened to the fucking Aisha fucking square on the on the bingo? I should have kept that in there. Shit, I should have kept that Aisha square. Damn it. Well, now I regret removing that Aisha square. Uh, by the way, Aisha is not in the voice chat with me. This is in the game. God damn. It's it's her. <laughs> She's been the one doing this to you! <laughs> this, is this is crazy considering this is a person I've had conversations with. <laughs> She's the one who's been doing this to you. Who's been stopping you from going back to visit your friends. Who's been manipulating you, just like Doc Scratch did. Oh, come on. I'm not that bad. At least I hope I'm not. By the way, unmute me if you haven't bothered to already. I the like music the... in this section rules. Besides, voiceover in Ren P is extremely annoying. Did you know you have to save every line as a different .ogg file? I didn't even know what a .ogg file was until our programmer explained it to me. Actually, wow, this is a huge pain in the ass. Let's go back to text only. That's better. You're falling to pieces. Every part of your body is literally sliding apart and falling into others. It's just like being hit by the house juju. Your corporeal form is not meant to- I just realized- I just realized- <laughs> I just- holy shit, hold on. I just realized that I should just put Hussy- shoved the Hussy into a room. Which is basically what the, like, the shitty fanboys of the comic think that Aisha did to Hussy. That's, that's what they think. That's what they think. <laughs> it's just like being hit by the house juju. Your corporeal form is not meant for this much meta-narrative bullshit. You just aren't made for it. Come on, you're fine. She taps you on the cheek and suddenly it's true. You're fine. She's made it so. She must be magic. Not quite. Get up, King. <laughs> Fuck you. You do slowly. For some inexplicable reason, you are more scared of her than you've been of Ultimate Dirk or Doc Scratch or anyone else. You have a feeling that she might be the real danger here. She laughs. It's not a villainous laugh, but it's not exactly a nice one either. I guess that's fair. I'm definitely not a hero. Or maybe I am a hero, and the dude I just shoved into that cupboard with the wolf head is the real villain. Or maybe it's the other way around, and evil is triumphed. 
You tell her that you don't remember her from the comic you read. Yeah, you wouldn't. Don't worry about it, you can call me the director. And you're right, all of this is my fault. All of this? Yeah, I'm the reason you couldn't reach your friends. And I'm the reason your memories got wiped. What? Why? Why would she do that? Because I wanted to try something, and it wouldn't have worked if he hadn't gone in with an open mind. Could you have really made friends with any of these kids if you'd known what they had waiting for them at the end of the line? Your snap response is an overwhelming yes, but of course you could. Of course you could. You can make friends with anyone. But you know deep down that isn't true. Could you really have looked John in the eye if you'd seen him get... God fucking damn it, it's the banned word. I can't say it. If you'd seen him get eaten by a video game monster and then lose his virginity in the back of his dad's car before literally dying. Could you have talked Jade like a normal person if you knew she was going to grow up to be half-dog goddess? V word. <laughs> v word. <laughs> Could you have resisted throwing Rose and Kanaya together the first chance you got? Could you have even handled becoming friends with Equius Nepeta or Feferi, knowing what was coming for them? God. Could you have stood to be in the same room as Gamzee or Aridin? Right? Making friends with people we know how their story ends isn't something we're equipped to do. It's like meeting a celebrity. Hard to be normal. You tell the director that you don't think any of this is very normal. I've met Aisha, a real true celebrity. She was in Homestuck. As you can see. She laughs. Yeah, you're smart. That's why I like you, MSPA reader. What? That's not your name. Your name is... Hey, come on. Leave something for the sequel. The truth is I used you, and I'm sorry for that. But I'm also not sorry. Because these kids were born to suffer. And that's what they're for. I know that sounds harsh, but it's true. Destiny wrapped in its thick, inky tentacles around them and pulled them into a story without happy endings. But you changed that. You gave them a chance to grow up. Wait, you did that? But you remember the other story, the real story. The one that just ended with everything falling to shit. Are you saying all that didn't happen? No, it happened. Well, it didn't actually happen because none of this is happening. Creators all the way down and such like. But you made the story and nobody can take that away from you. Oh my God, shut up. I can't handle this anymore. Oh. Christ. The director looks, for the first time, just a little bit worried. She covers it up quickly, however, and regains her placid stance of neutral indifference. This is the ultimate showdown. This is Aisha versus Alt Dirk. You want a real villain? This guy right here. This is so fucking stupid, even for all of you. I'm aware of that. How dare you? You're gonna lecture me on audacity? Come on, man. You're not even real. And yet you keep talking to me. Wow, you feel like you shouldn't be here for this, possibly? You always feel kind of awkward when authority figures fight. I'm not here for her. I'm here for you. We weren't done talking. Then why did you cut the damn UI in half? I got a little overzealous. It happens. Sorry about that, by the way. You shrug. Whatever, you've had worse. Still, you don't feel very well disposed towards this guy at this point, knowing all the garbage he's done and will probably keep doing. Although, you aren't sure if the director is any better. I'm much, much better than him. See? Oh. See what I can do? Can Dirk Strider do this? Can he talk with an actual human voice? What if... What if Dirk talks right now? Get fucked. See? Come on. You're at least a little happy to see me. Imagine if he had talked with Hussie's voice. It was just Hussie. Stop flexing at me. I have a wife. For a man so devoted to swords, don't you think it's going against your character to have such enormous guns? What, these? Oh, they're not mine. Just an artifact of the medium. I'd say thanks, but I feel like you all got more out of it than me. Stop Flirting with the audience, you anime-ass motherfucker. Hey, you're in charge. I wouldn't look like this if you didn't want me to. I actually let the artists have a lot of creative license. Nice evasion. Shut the fuck up. Okay, this bullshit doesn't matter. 
What does matter is that you... He directs you his anime gaz. Gaz? He directs his anime gaze back to you. This isn't just about Dirk anymore. You're zapping around and ruining everything. I seriously can't even begin to unravel the utter saccharine shit pile you created. You have absolutely decimated everyone's character arcs and motivations. Seriously. Eridan got a gender arc? Come on, man. There's actually plenty of seating for that storyline in the comic proper. Eridan's relationship to femininity is really... Do you realize what you've done here? You've completely stolen their destinies from them. I guess you did. But now they've got a chance to be actual teenagers and grow up in a world that isn't trying to murder them constantly. Well, Alterni is still doing that, but at least they won't be in a hostile video game environment. You've ruined them. But they're happy. Happy people don't get stories told about them. <clears throat> that isn't true. That can't be true. You look to the director for help. Surely she knows what to say. After all, this happened on her watch. She isn't looking at you. She's looking at the ground. She knew she was doing the whole time. She knew what she was doing the whole time. She knew how it would have to shake out. When were you planning to tell them? I was getting there. She knows that the prince knows what he's talking about. Nobody has thought more about causation and narrative flow than he has. Fuck. You shake your head. For a second there, it felt like things got a little screwy. Hey! She claps her hands in Ultimate Turk's face. Cut that shit out. Leave him alone. And stop wasting my time. She sighs. <laughs> Fine. She appears to gather herself, folding her hands in front of her like she is about to recite a poem. This has been a really interesting experiment, and I'm glad we got to do it. I've definitely learned a lot. But look, I need you to go back and give that beta to John. Because without that, they never play the game. The story never gets told. You never read the story. You were never here. Wait, wait. Isn't this just another timeline? A Doom timeline or whatever the fuck? The director shakes her head. No. It's a retcon. What you'd be doing here would be turning the Alpha timeline into a Doom timeline. And since the story has technically ended and started again and then ended and then started again so many times, switching tracks at this point would corrupt it beyond recognition. You would cause a paradox so catastrophic that it would literally tear the multiverses apart. You mean, like the Scratch? Worse than the Scratch. This would be the Blackout. Utter ruin. But, wait. You already threw the beta in the goddamn sewer. Shouldn't it have already happened? This utter ruin? No, because you still have the power to go back and change it. If you decide not to act, then we have to worry. You look back and forth between Ultimate Dirk and the Director, trying to find a way out. Some indication that they're fucking with you. They don't seem to like each other very much, but they do appear to be joined in their insistence that this, is, uh, this utter ruin bullshit is going to happen unless you betray all your friends. Unravel everything you did here. What was the point of doing any of this if you were always going to have to lose it all again in the end? The director shrugs. What's the point of doing anything? What's the point of living if we know it's all death in the end? Why do we open up a book if we all have to close it? Yeah, that's what you're asking. You don't want more questions, goddammit. I'm sorry. I don't have any answers for you. Just an option screen. <laughs> Take a long sip of my water. Well, what happens if I pick don't and the game just closes? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, now I have to 
to watch it again. God damn it. Oh. That's why you get the notifications, Ryan. No, I don't think so, because, like, they had just started the game for the first time. I think they were having problems running it. Oh, you saved. Well, it wouldn't take me long to get back to that point anyways. There's a skip button for that. Give it a, give it a minute. There it is. Okay, betray your friends. Fine. You know what? Fuck both of you. You'll do it. But also, fuck you. That's fair. Thanks for being reasonable. Get out of my video game. Hmm. I don't think I will. I'm gonna stick around and watch everything you tried to do here get flushed down the toilet of bad spinoffs. The director takes a step towards him. They... they aren't fighting exactly, but they're doing something. You have the distinct impression of two people fighting over a pen, or elbowing each other out of the way in order to type at the keyboard. You're feeling a little dizzy again. <laughs> Andrew Hussey would never do this to me. The director takes a long, tired breath. Sorry about that. Where were we? Turn away from her. You don't want to talk to her anymore. You just want to get this over with. I get that. I'll let you be alone. I'm sorry, kid. The director fades slowly until it's like she was never there at all. But the horror, the pit of ice that has opened up in your belly... That's still there, and it will never go away. Once you consign all your friends to a hero's journey full of pain and heartache, what will happen to you? Will you just vanish? Will whatever iteration of you that was created for this story just cease to be? When the book is closed, what will you be? Zap. The mailbox is here. It's all full. The little flappy dealie is up and everything. With difficulty, you pull the beta out, scattering the rest of the mail across the yard. Fuck you, bills and coupon books. Get a job. Up in the house, you feel you see a friendly face looking down at you. You take a deep breath. Yeah, I yeah, that must have been what all those notifications were. That must have been. You were right, Knox. Guys, I don't want to have to launch my game again, for fuck's sake. You know what's gonna happen! Wait. What? Did you see that? I just clicked on MSPA. Huh? I didn't. I didn't click on him by accident. Wait. Hold the fucking phone. Who's in charge of the story? Not Ultimate Dirk, not the director, and certainly not that guy who got shoved in a room with a wolf head. It's you. It's always been you. Why are you just doing what they told you to do? There has to be a third option. There's always a third option. Now I'm wondering if this is the wrong ending. Maybe we should wait on this one? Do you think we should pick the other two first? I think this might be a secret ending. Maybe we should save this for... Yeah, maybe... Yeah, we'll, we'll keep that. We'll throw bait in the sewer again. You know... Guys, it's just... Yeah, okay. Come on. I know you... I know I was gonna get comments if I didn't do it. But that's... That's what happens. There you go. Are you happy? And now we have to wait for it to reappear in the screen again. Are you happy? <laughs> Give it a second. It's got to think. It takes like 20 seconds for it to recognize the window. There. Alright. Put the beta back in the box. The bunny. The streets are empty. Wind skims the voids, keeping neighbors apart. As if grazing the hollow of a cut reed or, say, a plundered mailbox. Familiar note is produced. It's the one desolation plays to keep its instrument in tune. You have a feeling it's going to be a long day. Okay. Okay. 
So, we found a secret ending by accident. You have to mouse over MSPA to get this, by the way. It's just my dumb fucking luck we found this. Is there anything else that we can click on? No. Okay, wait, wait, hold the fucking phone. Who's in charge of the story? Not Ultimate Dirk, not that director, and certainly not that guy who got shoved in a room with a wolf head. It's you. It's always been you. Why are you just doing what they told you to do? There has to be a third option. There's always a third option. When the scratch happened, everything should have been erased. Everything was erased, except it wasn't, because someone intervened. Jade drew all of her friends close and kept them safe. She saved them. The first time you tried to bring Jade with you when you teleported, Beck didn't let you. But then, later, he did. Jade told you that he'd just been acting like a normal dog. Jade told you that Godcat- Jane told you that Godcat had just been acting like a good little kitty. Almost like their powers were gone. You pace in a quick circle. Then you hear Dad's car pulling up from behind you and zap out of there before you can get caught again. Zap. James said there are three options. I completely missed that, so. You've still got the beta clutched in your hand. Oh, we're gonna get a Radia cameo? I think so. But you're alone on Dave's roof underneath the blazing Houston sun. Nobody is going to bother you up here. There's something just that's teasing just at the edge of your understanding. And if you could only reach it, you need help. You need someone who knows about weird shit. Like a lock clicking in your brain, you understand what you have to do. Zap. Yep. Oh, it's you. How's it going? You look a little tired. You ask Aradia if she's been watching recently. If she knows what's been going down in your part in the neighborhood. She shakes her head. I lost track of you when you hopped universes. I'm about to try to get myself out of Kamen for good, and it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass. So I've been trying to conserve my energy. Oh, right. Yeah, you know about that. She raises an eyebrow. Don't worry about that, actually. You know some lore, is all. You might have actually seen what's going to happen to Aradia next. Actually, she doesn't have too much to worry about. She and Solix are fine. Actually, they're probably more fine than almost anyone else. Oh, that's good to know, I guess. Did you figure out what was going on with your friend's situation? Yeah. You tell Aradia what's been going on with your friend's situation. Wow. Yeah. And you're going to do it? You're going to erase this timeline? Because if you are, then, no offense, I might head out of can a little early. That's just the thing. You think you might have a plan? Oh? You tell her the plan. Does she think it'll work? A slow, brilliant smile paints a sunrise across her face. I have no idea, but I'd love to watch. The green sun. Oh, hold up. The green sun spreads out below you like a giant radioactive gumball that absolutely wants to tear you into a million greasy pieces. You can feel it tugging at all your organs, twisting up all the words inside of you, making a mess of the themes, dragging motifs screaming to the surface. This is the single largest source of raw narrative mass in the multiverse, and it should be killing you. Do you actually need me to do anything? Uh... You sort of just wanted her to vibe here with you in case you die. You don't want to die alone. Look at that Aradia face. That's fair. Hey, if you die, I'll pick up your bones for you. Thanks, Aradia. She smiles. See you on the other side, you say. You're not sure who you're talking to. You're guessing this is going to be pretty bad. It's... Well, it's not not bad. It's not pain, exactly, because when you're inside the green sun... You don't think you have nerve endings anymore. You're just a consciousness floating in the miasma of causation. You aren't sure how this is supposed to work. Should you maybe start thinking about your friends like you are in the same, in the like you are in the animes, drawing strength from the power of your social links? You think of a oh, social links. Fuck. I gotta get that social link up with fucking. Fucking, uh, Fuka. I gotta get that Yuko social link up. I gotta get that Yuko social link up. Think about John and Rose and your good friend Dave. 
Ah, ouch. Fucking ouch. Thinking too much hurts. You aren't going to be able to count the um, anime cliches for this one, you guess. You don't think about your friends. For once, you think about yourself. The impossibility that is you. Protagonist, reader, carrier of the story. Maybe not even the story, but this one. Well, maybe not every story, but this one. You have been erased so many times. You look across the rise and fall of this story and see just how many mistakes you've made. All the times you've broken your friend's trust or betrayed them or, hell, even killed them. You reach across to all of those uh, yous, your what-ifs, your do-overs. You let the blazing energy overtake you. You open yourself up. And everything goes green. And you better be on your best behavior, Orphaner. If this partnership is going to work out, forget this guy, Briska. We can do it ourselves. I gotta turn down the volume. Hold on. <laughs> uh, they did say friend. It's friend Vangelion. Could you at least give a guy a chance to respond to a couple of... What's that? Oh, this is everyone dying. Come here, kitty kitty. I'm home. Nepeta, this cave is far too small for someone with height as strong as mine. Pounce? Equius? What's that? Anyways, that's why I don't eat corn dogs anymore. What the fuck? Is this a normal future thing? <laughs> Earthquakes and shit? I guess that's a normal whenever thing, but we don't get as many of them in Houston. I want to know why he won't eat corn dogs. Is it because they're shaped like dicks? I need to know, Dave! I need to know! I don't think that's an earthquake. Autoresponder? No seismic activity detected in the area. <laughs> they're there. They're there. You're telling me I wrote this in another history? Yes, as far as I'm aware. Incredible. It's very boring. I think it's brilliant. I mean... The green sun pulses around you, slowly collapsing being. And as you feel it subsume you, you feel yourself unspooling, swallowed in the light. You think of how you came to be here, where you are right now, and the choices you made along that path. What are the odds that you and this... You... That the you that prevailed is this one. It's probably something that could be mapped out, but you're too busy eating the fucking sun with your whole body to figure it out. Instead, you sink into the feeling of connections that hold you together. The bonds you created are threaded through your arms and your belly and your heart. Oh, it's... It's the end of... It's the end of the... I don't want to spoil anything, but it's like the ending of the balance arc. Just saying. Your body is nothing, consumed by flame. And yet, you feel your start to yourself start to become. The mail goes in the box. Get ready. This is the best part of the movie. All the classic memes come from this part. John, every part of the movie is hot trash. Uh, it's not so bad. I want to see the guy put the bunny back in the box. God damn it. Fucking Con Air. This movie is so bad that the drones are approaching your neighborhood. It's too late for the human race. Darkness seethes at this timeline. And in the distance, you hear what may be cracks, splinters through space and time. Reality is compressing and falling apart around you in a cacophony of breaking glass. All of your friends, all of their dreams, rendered away to nothing. All of it unraveling. No. No. It doesn't disappear. I don't let it. I am bigger than this story. But I am also inside the story. So I gather it up and I keep it close to me. And as soon as I remove it from the causation, it's like it never happened. I take the timeline and I lock it away. That's what it is. It is a locked timeline, and I am its guardian. Its first guardian.
thanks for playing. Go ahead and well, technically someone did die in another timeline. I can't even check off Jake. There was no Jake. There was absolutely no Jake. Not even in like the back. Not even in like the fucking flashbacks. There was no Jake. Uh, I'll count that in regular Dave. I don't think we're gonna get. I don't think we're gonna get one. We didn't see Dick Scratch. If we had seen Dick Scratch, we might have gotten a fucking bingo. But but we never actually saw Doc. They mentioned Jake. That doesn't count. Is that it? Yeah, I don't think we're gonna go. <laughs> there was a fake out. When was there a fake out? There wasn't a... F oh, you're right. There was a fake out ending. Yeah, you're right. Completely forgot about that already. <laughs> I think that's it. Shit. I don't think we're... I don't think we actually... No, there's not one ending. We got... There was many, many endings. Are you kidding me? Nah, we didn't get bingo. Shit. Oh, well. We were close! We were close in a couple of rows here. <laughs> I didn't even mention Precure. I, di I didn't bitch about my CPU. I talked about it. That doesn't count. Shit. That's still not bad. Well, Aisha was down here in the CRJ corner, so it wouldn't have mattered much. Alright, let's check the uh, credits real quick, and then we'll stop. Alright. Oh, writers. Oh, Aisha wrote afterward, unsurprisingly. And, uh, I believe Lalo wrote Dirk. Yeah, Lalo wrote Dirk. Character artists. Uh, we had Gina. Did, oh, Gina did afterward. Okay. God damn. <laughs> oh, and Dirk. Gina did both. Background artists. Courtney. Courtney did Dirk and afterward. Editing illustrations. Courtney did Dirk and afterward. Friend Vangelion. Let's see. Anything new? Oh, oh man. Normal. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Normal song name. That's a good one. That's a good one. Clark Powell and Astral Kid. That was... I've never heard that song before. <laughs> well, that was, um... Well, that was certainly something. Just in a hole. 
Pest request was certainly something. Uh, thanks for watching. If you watched all of them, uh, God bless you. I don't, I don't know. Um, chum roll. What? What about chum roll? This unfortunately doesn't count all of them because I haven't. It it erased my uh. It, it erased some of my progress when the Dave arc came out. It erased some of my progress. And I never played Roxy on this computer. So, not all my progress is here. Director's cut. Believe in me that believes in you. No quitters. Determine not to betray your friends. You also smash the shit out of that fast forward button. Or, you know, saved. The note desolation plays. You're having a feeling it's going to be a long day. Savior of the waking world. You rescued your friends from a very long day. Well, there it is. <clears throat> there it is, fellas. That was... That was Pester Quest. Thank you for watching. Uh... <laughs> And I'm going to end the recording for YouTube, and then I'm going to mention one thing before we go. But if you're on YouTube, thank you for watching. It's a Gurren Lagann reference. I don't know what that is. Bye, guys.